Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing how to set up clean and use the Wagner Flexio paint sprayer. I've been using this paint sprayer for a little over six months now. And one of the most asked questions I hear amongst new furniture flippers is about paint sprayers. So I'm sharing everything I've learned and what I do to get a really smooth finish. I'll also be sharing some sanding tips and for this tutorial, I'm doing a one-step paint recipe from Shannon over at Black Sheep House. Let's get started. For this demonstration of the Flexio paint sprayer, I'm doing a quick makeover on this little console. I picked this up sometime last year and didn't really have any plans for it, so it just ended up being a catch-all for my paint materials, etc. I got started with the usual cleaning, but I was really anxious to see what was under the paint on the top, and I was pleasantly surprised to find beautiful wood grain, which I'm leaving the way it is. Whenever you're removing material like paint or lacquer, you want to start with a coarse grit. I usually start with 80 to 120. I'm using 120 here since this was not a thick coat of paint. Once you've removed the material, you want to gradually move up the grits. The smaller the number, the coarser the grit. A coarse grit scratches the surface more. So when you move up the grit, you are removing the scratches from the previous grit and replacing it with a shallower one. Don't be tempted to skip a grit. It will take you longer because a finer grit will be much less effective at removing the initial sanding marks. Start with 80 to 120, then go to 150 to 180, then 220 to 240. I usually finish off right at 220. Also keep in mind, excessive sanding affects the absorption of certain stains. Anyway, back to the project. After removing all of the finish from the top, I scuff sanded the rest of the unit using 220 grit, cleaned it up and got ready for painting. Setting up the sprayer is easy. This is the turbine or the motor of the sprayer. There are several models of the Flexio Wagner sprayer. I purchased the Flexio 3000 late last year on sale for about 127. I think this must have been just before I started seeing the turbine looking smaller and presumably lighter. This has been the main setback for me and this sprayer. It feels heavy after I'm using it for some time. In the box are two nozzles, the eye spray nozzle which is good for broader projects like walls and the detail nozzle which has that blue tip, ideal for cabinets and furniture. I've never used the eye spray nozzle so I am only sharing my experience with the detail nozzle today. It comes with an extra set of filters. Before every use, you wanna check the air filters to see that they are not excessively dirty. If it is, you just snap the lever open and replace it. This little brush is really handy for cleaning up later. I also keep a stash of disposable strainers. They are reusable ones that you can use. I pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's and they usually come out about 25 cents each. If you buy them elsewhere in bulk, you can save a lot on those. My advice is to practice always straining your paint, especially if you're using from a can that was previously opened. Air causes dry bits around the lid and the top, and those can get into your sprayer and clog it up. These are a couple of cup liners. I've never used them. I actually don't mind washing the cup when I'm done, but I think I'm gonna use them as part of this demonstration today. Let's see how that works out. This is the detail nozzle. Like I said earlier, it's best suited for finer finishes like cabinets and furniture. I'm going to take it apart and then we can put it back together. After unscrewing the yellow part, the air cap is released and you can remove the nozzle. On the inside is a little red seal that you remove when you're cleaning it. You always want to make sure the seal is reinstalled correctly. The side with the groove should face outwards. Looking at it here, you can see it definitely needs cleaning. On this side is the container seal and the tube that picks up the paint. Now let's put it back together. After you replace the seal, then you attach the pickup tube. Set it in the direction based on the angle you would most likely be holding it. If you will be pointing straight ahead or slightly down, then put it this way. If you're doing a bigger piece and you will be angling upwards, then you turn it the opposite direction. 
After making sure that red seal is in correctly, just line up the nozzle with the little groove. It's going to keep popping out until you put the air cap and screw in the yellow cover. Take your time and line it up. Turn it tightly. You can always adjust the spray pattern by turning the air cap. And make sure this air tube is connected. The sprayer is ready. I'm trying out this one step paint recipe from Shannon over on her channel Black Sheep House. I had a color sample and some 123 primer, both of which I got at the Oops Corner at Lowe's. Shannon did one cup of each, but I am using the sample container and just adding the same amount of primer and polycrylic. I really enjoy looking at her videos. She's very innovative and always trying out new techniques. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check her out. Once I had that mixed well, I put it through the strainer, then attach it to the nozzle, then the turbine. Holding the turbine toward you, you want to make sure you have it placed as far as it can go. Then turn it and the little yellow clip underneath should snap it into place. It's finally time to have some fun. You should always test it out before doing your piece. Now there are three things you have control over when it comes to your finish. The thickness of your paint, the airflow, and the material flow, or the amount of paint that comes out. This little dial right behind the trigger is the material flow, which in my opinion is poorly designed. There's really no way of clearly knowing where it's at. And if it's too high, you could have too much pain going on at a time and the opposite if it's too low. I keep it dialed in somewhere in the middle. As it is here, it's all the way turned to the right or clockwise, which would give you the max material flow. Now I'm turning it all the way to the left or anti-clockwise for the minimum flow. And you can see right here how it's popping out. So based on that, I gauge a midpoint. This dial at the top controls the amount of air level produced. Both of these settings are what you're going to want to test to see if you're getting the finish you're happy with. For me, that sweet spot is that midway material flow and the airflow either between 3 and 4 or 6 and 7. I prefer light coats. I feel I have more control that way and I can always build on it. It does take more time, but it works best for me. Now let's go over to our project. I'm setting the airflow between 6 and 7 and keeping the material setting at that midpoint. Also, before you start spraying, always check the nozzle tip and clean any paint that may have dried up. If you want to paint up and down, turn the nozzle vertical. Left to right, turn it horizontally. The direction you set the nozzle is totally up to you and the piece that you're painting.
I removed the doors to paint them. These little tripods are really convenient for elevating smaller pieces you're painting to get around those sides. It's totally okay to leave the paint and the sprayer between coats. Just make sure you clean off that tip before you start again. Allow as much time as you can between coats and make sure you sand it lightly before applying your second or third coat if needed. I use a 220 grit between coats. Also, don't forget to wipe off that dust from the sanding before you go in with another coat. I poured the remaining paint back into the little sample container. I wanted to show you how much paint I used for this project. I was able to refill it, so that means I used two of these sample containers to do this project. Now let's look at how quick and easy cleanup can be. I know this is the part that discourages people from spraying, but once you get used to disassembling just like we did earlier, this can take you 5-10 to 10 minutes. I use hot water, a brush and some Dawn dish soap. I usually don't take that little red ring off the nozzle at this point. It's so small it can easily go down the sink. When I'm all done, I clean it separately. Sometimes I forget, which obviously you can see from the buildup that was on it earlier, but I do it at some point. It's a good idea to reassemble after you clean it and just run some water through the sprayer just to kind of flush it out. That way you know nothing is left behind that can dry up and clog it up later. Here's our little completed project. I really hope this video was helpful for you if you just got your sprayer or considering getting one. This is a good sprayer for beginners. It's easy to assemble, easy to use, and once you dial in those settings, you can really have amazing results. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or just say hi. I love hearing from you. And don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, bye.